Welcome to the FileAid MVS Online Browse and Edit Basics module. Here you will learn about the features and functions of the FileAid editor. Many of the commands available are similar to those found in the ISPF editor, but have extended capabilities that give you more power. The supported file types are extended to include vSAM, IAM files, CA Panvillet and CA Librarian files, and HFS files. Although this is the Browse and Edit module, the focus will be on the editor. The records displayed on the screen look pretty much the same, but the command sets differ. When browsing, your data is safe. Editing, though, can be more exciting. If you are not careful, you can wreck your data. There is a lot to cover in this module. You see a partial list here. It's almost enough to make your head spin. It would be great if the information could be compressed, then somehow funneled into your head for instant knowledge. Unfortunately, it doesn't work that way. In any case, this module will be beneficial for anyone using the FileAid editor, and the volume of information is manageable. I will check back with you in a few minutes to see how you are doing. We will begin at the top of the list and have a look at navigation within the FileAid editor. From the FileAid main menu, choose option 2. On the Edit Dataset Specification panel, the first entry determines the initial viewing mode. C for character is chosen here. The other viewing modes are discussed in detail later in this module. Next, the data set to be edited is entered. Note that a disposition of share may be used. This would allow concurrent access with a batch job that has disposition equal share in its JCL or with another FileAid user. The last entry in this section allows for creation of an audit trail which would contain before and after images of records changed during the edit session. In the next area, record layout information is entered. In the file to be edited, all of the records are the same length and format, so only one single record layout or copybook is needed. The PDS and member name for that copybook are entered. Subsequent information is for cross-reference files, which are discussed in another module. The final section is related to selection criteria, which is also discussed in another module. The basic information is now complete. Occasionally, you do not remember the exact name of a data set you used a couple of days ago, or weeks ago, or even months ago. No worries, all data sets you access are logged by FileAid and retained as the last referenced file list. Rather than searching system catalogs, now you can just view the list of files you have access with FileAid and select it from this list. This is especially helpful with files containing a large number of nodes in the dataset name. Simply type file list on the command line and the list appears. You can press F1 for the corresponding tutorial, and that is shown here. Press F3 to return to the file list. We select the desired file and note that there were five previous uses. Chances are, if you do not remember the file name, you probably will have a hard time remembering the record layout and where it's found. This information is also maintained in the list. Now, just select that occurrence. Once the data set is open in the editor, we see that FileAid's character format is similar to the ISPF editor. 
up and down scrolling within the records is done by using the default function keys F7 and F8. Right and left scrolling within the currently visible records is done by using the default function keys F10 and F11. The scroll amount to be used on a continuing basis appears in the upper right corner of the screen. Cursor position, half page, and full page scrolling are all options here, as is any number up to four digits. The number 10 would mean vertical scrolling by 10 records and horizontal scrolling by 10 columns. To override the scroll amount for one time, commands may be used in conjunction with the various function keys. The new value here is maximum, entered as max or M, which will scroll to the beginning or end of the record or the beginning or end of the file depending on which function key is used. Next we will move on to look at the four different viewing modes available in the editor. Beginning in the character viewing mode, we will display the message line which reminds us how to change to the other viewing modes. Type MSG on the command line. The message line shows the primary commands available here to change to the other viewing modes. To turn off the message line, the command is MSG off. First, we will look at formatted mode. The command is FMT. Here we see the record layout or copybook on the left side of the screen and the values for each field on the right. This mode displays one record at a time. You will learn how to customize this display later in this module. At this point, we will look at a different viewing mode, vertically formatted. The command is VFMT. Here we see that multiple records are displayed in columnar format. The column headers contain the field names from the record layout as well as the data types, the positions within the record, and the field number. You will learn more about this viewing mode later in this module. We will move on to the last viewing mode, unformatted. The command is UNFMT. Here we see one record displayed with a columns ruler and wrapped at 70 characters per line. This mode allows single record viewing of records longer than the standard page width. In other words, you can see five or six hundred characters on the same screen without having to scroll. Now we need to return to formatted mode to talk about a few more things. The command is FMT. Right and left scrolling is now actually previous and next. That is, F10 will display the previous record and F11 will display the next record. Up and down scrolling is also different here. Up and down refers to scrolling within the current record and record layout. Now that we have seen the various viewing modes, we can look at how to customize the display. In formatted mode, the leftmost portion of the display shows the field names from the record layout and a column of information about each field. The data appears to the right. The primary commands affecting the display of the field names are shown here. Similarly, the primary commands affecting the information display are shown here. Finally, the primary command affecting the data display is shown here. We will now take a closer look at all of these primary commands.
This display shows that each field name is prefixed by a number. That number may be used instead of the field name in many commands. To see the COBOL or PL1 level used in the record layout, you may use the show command, show level. The show num command may be used to redisplay the field numbers. There may be times when the display of certain fields may be unnecessary. In particular, four field types, filler, redefines, occurs, and group, may be turned on or off. Here we see how to turn off the display of filler. To turn on or off the display of individual fields, use the display command. Here we see the request to display only fields 1, 2, 6, and 19. Display All is used here to turn on the display of all fields. The display of individual fields may be altered as well. Field number 8 is displayed normally. We request the display in hex, which is seen here. We enter the command to revert to standard character display. And that is shown here. Here, we turn off the display of all fields. Next, we use the locate command to display all fields containing the word date somewhere in the field name. To display additional fields, we again use the locate command to display all fields containing the word tax somewhere in the field name. All located fields are shown here. To modify the information display, use the show and offset commands. The initial information display shows the format of each field, such as 5 bytes alphanumeric or 3 bytes packed and signed. First, the show command. Show picture displays the COBOL picture for each field. Show offset displays the offset for each field relative to the beginning of the record. Now the offset command. Offset hex shows the same information in hexadecimal. Finally, offset columns displays the start position of each field. For numeric data, the display of leading zeros may be turned on and off with the zero command. Here we see the values with leading zeros on. Let's look at customization for vertically formatted mode. Previously, we saw how the display command allows turning field displays on and off. While the display command applies to vertically formatted mode as well, the hide and hold commands are often used. The hold command may be used to fix one or more fields on the left side of the screen and not participate in left and right scrolling. Let's see how these commands work. The command hide1 will hide the first field. If we enter either hide or hold, the hide and hold setting window will appear. We see that the first field is already hidden. Next, we use line commands to hide the second field and hold the fourth field. Our return to the data shows the fourth field on the left side of the screen. Scrolling to the left, we see that the fourth field remains fixed on the left side of the screen. Note also that the hide and hold commands do function in formatted mode as well. You have completed the sections covering navigation, viewing modes, and display customization. That's about 23% of this module.
Next, we will look at the line commands. As we see here, the line commands may appear anywhere in the six column area on the left side of the screen. All of the examples shown are in character mode, but the line commands all function in the same manner in vertically formatted mode as well. We will look at the commands seen here. We begin by viewing a small file in character mode. The data has been simplified to make it easy to follow the effects of the line commands. Here, the line commands copy and after are entered in the line command area. Copy the fourth line and place it after the seventh line. Both commands have been entered with a trailing blank to increase their visibility. The blanks are not necessary. Here we see the result. The new line is tagged appropriately. Here the request is to copy three lines beginning at line 3 and place them before line 14. And here is the result. Move the block of lines 4 through 9 and place them here. And you see the result. Note that here has the same result as after. Also, the lines were simply moved so they are not tagged as new. Here we copy two lines beginning at line 3 and place them after line 7 three times and also before line 16 two times. And here is the result. The additional new lines would be visible by scrolling down. Here we exclude from view nine lines beginning at line 3. Remember, exclude means hide, not delete. The result shows the message line. Given that nine lines are excluded, we redisplay the first three. Now, six lines remain excluded, we redisplay the last two. Finally, to redisplay all excluded lines in this group, we simply show them. Delete the five lines beginning at line five. And here is the result. Delete the block of lines 4 through 12. And here is the result. Repeat the block of lines 4 through 7 three times. And here you see the result. Finally, insert four new lines after line 7. Four new lines become available. Line numbers are not assigned until lines contain data. I said that I would check back with you in a few minutes. How are you doing? Oh, not so well. Maybe I can help. After finishing the section on line commands, you have now completed about 41% of the module. Pretty good! Next, we will review the primary commands, beginning with those that are available in all viewing modes. Primary commands are entered on the command line. With autosave enabled, any exit from the editor will automatically save the file as is. With autosave disabled, exiting the editor will cause the appearance of a data changed save or cancel prompt.
Cancel exits the edit session without saving any changes made since the last time the file was saved. End exits the editor governed by the auto save setting. Help will display information about the last command executed or attempted. If no prior command, Help will open a tutorial on the editor topic. Return exits the editor and takes you to the FileAid primary menu. Save commits pending changes but does not terminate the edit session. Finally, undo will nullify any changes made on the current screen since the last time enter was pressed. There is only one level of undo, but multiple changes may be undone. The next three commands, keys, PF show, and profile, will be shown with examples. The keys command displays the screen where the function keys are set. Here we see the values for keys 1 through 12. Pressing enter takes us to the screen for setting keys 13 through 24. PF show displays the key value information. PF show off does the opposite. PF show tailor displays a window allowing additional customization. The profile can be described as the rules governing an edit session. The profile command displays the rules currently in effect. The reset command removes any non-data lines from the display and will, in fact, redisplay all excluded lines. The next four commands are probably the most powerful and most frequently used of the entire command set. Here we see the basic format of the change command. Since the change command is actually find first, then change, most of the parameters seen here apply to the find command as well. Some of the parameters are like their counterparts in the ISPF editor. Among these are the direction of the search and whether or not to change all, which lines to search, excluded, non-excluded, or all, starting column and range of columns, and range of lines. With the record layout allowed by FileAid, you can limit the change to a specific field either by field name or by field number. The two remaining options really give the FileAid editor tremendous power. First of all, an operator may be specified. So, for example, instead of changing 3 to 5, you can change values less than 3 to 5. Instead of changing W to R, you can change values greater than W to R. Also, you can use the keywords invalid, valid, and any for special cases. With so many options to consider, there is a change wizard of sorts. Simply enter the change command with no operands and a pop-up window will provide a series of prompts. Let's look at some examples. We begin by entering the change command with no operands. The change command window appears. This screen recaps the change command options and functions as a template. Simply enter the appropriate values. Note that the find command displays a comparable screen when entered without operands, shown here. The same goes for the exclude command, and you see that screen here. Now, let's look at some change command examples that bypass this screen. The command here is change the character 0 to the letter X 
from columns 2 through 3 and change all occurrences. Note that the equal operator is the default, so the EQ shown here is optional. Here we see the result. The changed lines are tagged, the cursor is positioned on the first change, and the changed message appears in the upper right corner. Pressing F1 reveals the change count. The command here is change values greater than 2 to the letter Y from columns 1 through 65 and change all occurrences. Here we see the results and the changed message. Pressing F1 reveals the change count. The command here is change invalid values to 99.99 .99 in field number 19 and change all occurrences. Note that referencing a field by its name or number requires a preceding slash. Also, as long as the record layout is available, a field may be referenced by name or number. That is to say, this command is valid even if the current viewing mode is character. Here we see the results and the changed message. Pressing F1 reveals the change count. The exclude command has operands similar to the find and change commands. The command here is exclude from the display lines where the value in column 1 is less than 4 and exclude all such lines. Here we see the result and messages. Given that some lines have been excluded, the command here is change any value in column 1 to the percent sign, search only the excluded lines, and change all such occurrences. The result is shown here. Note that all previously excluded lines are now visible. Here we are sorting based on last name, which is columns 6 through 20 in ascending order. Here we see the result and the sort message. Here we are sorting last name in descending order, but only lines 1 through 10. Here we see the result and the sort message. The last example in this section will use the find command. To begin, we see the file in vertically formatted mode with the view limited to field number 21 only. We sort this field in descending order. We see that the first 11 values are greater than 7, followed by many 7s. We enter the command to find all values greater than 7 in this field. Since the command is in formatted mode, the value is simply entered as 7, but all of the variations seen here are valid as well. We see the confirmation message that all 11 values were found. The question now is, how can you search for values greater than 7 in that same field without the benefit of the record layout? Let's have a look. We know that this field begins in position 99 and it is 3 bytes long. We enter a find command. No success. We see the message put string in quotes. We try again, putting the 7 in quotes. Again, no success. The not found message can't be true because we know that 11 values are greater than 7. The command must be wrong. 
First, we look at the data in hex. It turns out that we have two options. We can specify the search value in hexadecimal, denoted by the letter X, prefixing the complete hexadecimal string in quotes, as shown here. Or, we can specify the search value as packed. To do this, prefix the string in quotes with PL3, meaning packed, length 3 bytes. Leading zeros are optional. Trailing zeros are mandatory because the field is defined as having two decimal places. You have completed another section, so you have completed about 65% of the module. Now we will review the primary commands that are available in character mode. Here is a list of the commands. We will look at examples of each. Use the compile command to display the record layout specification screen. If a record layout had not been specified on the edit dataset specification screen, the screen will be incomplete as shown here. If a record layout had been specified previously, this screen would contain that information and allow for its change. Columns off simply turns off the columns ruler display. This command requests copying the data set named and putting it after line 3. The confirm copy screen appears because the dataset attributes differ. We press enter to allow the copy. The results and message are shown here. The cut command actually copies, rather than cuts, the block of lines from 1 through 7 and puts them in a buffer. Here we see the resulting message. Next, we paste the lines after line 12. And we see the results and the message. Next, we exclude the block of lines from 2 through 15. And see the results. Then we flip the excluded and non-excluded lines and see the results here. The hex command turns on the hexadecimal display. The info command displays dataset information. Now we will look at the last group of primary commands those that are available when working in formatted mode. The commands to be reviewed are shown here. We will look at examples of each. The delete command deletes the current record visible on the screen. Here we see the result. What had been the second record on the file is now the first, and the record deleted message is visible in the upper right corner of the screen. To insert a new record, use either input or insert. They both work the same. Here we see the result. There is no record number until saved, and the default values are all blanks and zeros. The repeat command repeats the current record, resulting in the record repeated message. Changing to character mode shows the duplicate record tagged with new. The XMLGen command 
displays the XML Gen Processing Options screen to enter the appropriate information. Here we are positioned at the first record. The Locate Record command LR is used here to position us at the twelfth record. And here is the result. You have seen all of the main topics, so you have completed about 89% of the module. You are heading for the finish line. We will finish this module by looking at some miscellaneous items. First, a few words about dataset names. Pattern characters or wildcards may be used to specify a dataset name on any file aid screen, such as edit or compare. The pattern characters recognized by file aid are the question mark for single character replacement, the percent sign also for single character replacement, the asterisk for single node replacement, and the plus sign for multiple node replacement. For example, to access the dataset userid.fasamp.employee, any of these may be used. Userid.fasamp.employee percent sign, where the percent sign represents the letter E, or userid.fasamp.asterisk where the asterisk represents the last node employee, or plus dot employee, where the plus represents the first two nodes, user ID dot FASAMP. Also, a few words about file aid parameters. The general parameters are accessed by choosing option zero from the file aid primary menu. The ISPF option simply allows setting your standard ISPF parameters and PF keys. We will look at the system parameters and HFS parameters here. All other parameter settings are covered in appropriate places in other modules. Within the system parameters, some are covered in other modules. Three are covered here. Equal to is an example of a jump command, and the destination of a jump is controlled by this parameter. If set to yes, the equal to command will jump to file aid option two, the file aid editor. If set to no, the equal to command will jump to ISPF option two, the ISPF editor. How about having the best of both worlds? FileAid provides another option with recursive commands which are similar to the jump commands. These are entered on the command line but do not use the equal sign prefix. Here you see an example FE for the FileAid editor. Used on any FileAid screen, a recursive command suspends the current display and immediately presents the requested file aid function panel. When you exit the function panel, you are returned to the suspended display. Here are three examples. FB or F1 goes to file aid browse. FE or F2 goes to file aid edit. And F35 goes to the file aid vSAM utility. A complete list of the recursive commands appears in the attached file aid reference summary. Next, let's look at the vSAM intermediate name. Simply put, whenever non-qualified, that is not in quotes, dataset names are entered, a complete name is normally constructed by prefixing the dataset name with your TSO user ID. If no data set is found, 
FileAid will prefix the Enter dataset name with the vSAM intermediate name entry seen here and try again. This is especially useful if there are special naming conventions for vSAM files. The concatenation list dataset is a PDS which contains only the names of datasets containing record layouts. Its use allows concatenation of record layout datasets on FileAid screens not supporting multiple dataset names. This PDS consists of just two members shown here. The dataset names in member list A are unqualified, so the user's TSO logon ID would be appended to the front to build a full dataset name. The dataset names in member list B are fully qualified and would be used as is. That brings us to usage. The desired member name with a preceding plus sign is specified in place of the record layout dataset name. All datasets in member list A are searched for a member named employee. And finally, the HFS option allows you to specify a default hierarchical file system home directory. For more information when using FileAid, the tutorial is accessible from the primary menu and you may press F1 for help on your current screen. The FileAid MVS documentation area on Frontline provides access to the reference manual and user's guide. They are in PDF format and available for download. Click on the Attachments tab to download the reference summary and the exercises that will give you some hands-on experience with the FileAid editor. Congratulations! You are done! You made it to the finish line. This concludes this module. Thank you.